Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. Ontario Liberal MP Frank Valeriat comes from an established Italian family in Guelph. His father served for a long time as a local city councillor, and Frank himself had a very successful legal career in the city until he decided to throw his hat into the political ring. He married later in life, he has two young children, and he joins me now to talk all about a very interesting and busy life beyond politics. Welcome to Beyond Politics. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to be here. Now, I understand that your grandmother was one of your primary influences as a child on your personality, on, yeah. on how you saw life. Why was that? My grandmother, Valeria, was a giver. She just looked after the community. She was up early in the morning uh, just uh, planning on how she could help others. Uh, she used to bake huge uh, pots of pasta and invite people who didn't have any food to her home on uh, on Neve Street and uh, I used to go and visit as a little child and uh, it was important uh, to me uh, to see that and it certainly influenced it, it influenced my father and certainly influenced me. Was it, um, I mean that obviously involved a lot of extra work for her and she would have had her own family commitments. Did anyone ever say to her, why are you doing this? She had ten children. Oh my gosh. And uh, no, she, uh, she didn't uh, she didn't face any opposition by any of the family members mm -hmm. at all, no. Um, ten children, that's a lot of children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're... you're oh, other Valeria's had 18 really? children. Really? Oh, we have a huge family oh as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah, The yeah. Christmas celebration. It's great on a voter's list. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a higher, like, coach line. It's true. We that's... have large family reunions when we have them. So. Yes, and hopefully you have those on voting day. <laughs> uh, no, I wish we did. <laughs> Yeah. So you're a little boy and you're exposed to all of this, and you're also surrounded by this big family. Um, what was your childhood like? It was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we did, it's not like we didn't have our conflicts like every other, you know, family, you know, sibling rivalries and that kind of thing. But uh, no, there were six siblings in, in my in family. family. Where were you? I was the baby. Oh. So wow. I was kind of spoiled but on the one hand, but had to fight for everything I got on the other hand okay. among my other siblings. Right. Uh, but no, I had a mom who just uh, loved us to death. She cooked like you couldn't imagine. Uh, she uh, she really invited everyone into We We had a Grand Central Station. You combine that with my father's profile in the community who welcomed everybody into the home and right. we had a really active household. Did you ever wish that you didn't? <clears throat> No. No. No, I, I don't normal. remember ever wishing that I didn't. Okay. I just enjoyed meeting all the people that they brought home from just every walk of life. Right. Um, what were your family dinners like? <laughs> it was chaos. Okay. Um, yeah, but, and that's because we often invited others to come, you know, right. to come with us, especially when I was in high school. I'd bring friends down, and my sisters would be, bring friends down, but uh, they were they were chaos. My father and mom used to have to put up with a lot from the kids, you know, arguing with one another and that kind of thing. And but fighting over the food. Fighting over the food, but it was always ended with we all had our tasks, okay. right? Right after supper was over, somebody had to wash, somebody had to polish the floor. You remember those old polishers? Oh, wow. And, right uh, after supper? Right after supper I remember <clears throat> always getting electrocuted <clears throat> because our polisher would touch uh, a washer and dryer which were in the kitchen and I'm sure whoever wired it up didn't do it right yeah you'd always get that little you know kind of thing but it so was, the polishing was your job it was yeah when I got a little older okay when I got older than that it was cutting the lawns and washing the car all right so um, were there particular stages at which you graduated to these chores Do you remember <laughs> what your first chore was is the polishing because you were already close to the floor? You usually elevated when somebody left home to go to okay. university. So then by the time they all left home, you had all the I had stories. everything. That's right. No, my I, my sister, I have a, a disabled sister who was at home until mom died. So she was oh, always at home. Okay. And that introduced a whole other uh, level of responsibility. Yeah. We all took turns looking after Marianne. Uh, who was kind of like the glue to the family. Right. She was severely autistic. Right. And, uh, you know, mom and dad made sure that she was kept at home with them for her entire, well, well they were able to look after yeah. her for, for their entire lives, and we all shared that responsibility. Um, what happened to her when your parents passed? She's now in a home of Point Fisher in Guelph, being okay. very well looked after. Okay, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite meal? 
As a kid. Fridays, mom would make homemade bread and she would make pizza with the dough and she would make hot cross buns. Oh my so God. So Friday was Friday, incredible. You, you just came in line you, up you know, with hot bread coming oh. out of the oven with melting butter on it. That wasn't my favorite. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite, my favorite was uh, the gnocchi. Mom made homemade gnocchi, Yum. and it was incredible. With what kind of a sauce? Oh, red sauce. Okay. Very thick. Southern Italians make a very thick red sauce. Right. Southern Italians make a thinner red sauce. And was, is that still your favorite meal? If yes. You can get it. Yes, I, I actually am able to make mom's gnocchi and her sauce perfectly. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. And others in the community have yeah. fought for her meatball recipe. So, so your mom was obviously an incredible cook. An incredible cook. Absolutely. The Lord knows how she did it. With and all I'll those tell kids. you, it was the pathway to a lot of other relationships in the community. It's amazing how barriers are broken down when people come to your home and and eat. Yeah. And talk. Yeah. You know? And the wine doesn't hurt. And the wine doesn't hurt. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, what was the expectation on you as the little baby of the family? What were what did people think or want you to be when you grew up? Uh, it was either a priest or uh, a priest. <laughs> no, it was a, a priest or a doctor. You know, there were very yeah. limited uh, okay. uh, careers back then. Right. There were only priests and lawyers and doctors and teachers in the world, okay. uh, as far as we knew. Right. And we never came into contact with many others. Okay. So they were pretty much the options back then. And? I became a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, I don't know that I was so much influenced. I, I must have been influenced by my parents, but it was out of my own choosing that I became a lawyer. I, I, I did want to become one. I didn't feel the pressure. You didn't want to become a priest. No, I gave about five minutes thought. To okay. That. <laughs> not that it's not a great job. No, but um, calling, calling actually. What was the um, interest in law? Um, <clears throat> helping people, advocating for people. Uh, I didn't have. Uh, I, I wasn't good with my hands. Right. You know, in plumbing or carpentry sure. or anything like that. So I thought, if I'm going to help people in another way, um, I better learn the law. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it to be uh, uh, just a, uh, a very versatile career mm -hmm. that would allow me to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I became a lawyer. Did you enjoy that career? I loved the career. Okay. Yeah, 28 years as a lawyer. Wow, that is a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just developed a big practice in Guelph. And, and I mean, why run? Your dad was a counselor. Yes, uh, for, for years. Many, many years. 25 years or something. Um, so you had that knowledge of um, politics in your family and you had an understanding of what was involved. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to do it? Well, a number of things happened. Uh, our member of parliament at the time decided to retire in 06. Uh, I, I gave no thought to running at that point. I was mm -hmm. sitting at home and received a phone call. My wife and I were, had just put the kids to bed and I was asked if I would consider running. And, and I thought, why would you ask me? And they explained Explained to me how they observed me, what they thought of me as a, a balanced person. I have a strong sense of social justice, but a strong sense of fiscal responsibility. And I see myself, and I'm seen as a bridge builder in the community. You know, very balanced, trying to get the best out of people, trying to find common ground. I, I did that on the school board for 18 years while I was on the board. And um, <clears throat> I also had two children at the time. Mm -hmm. And frankly, there was a convergence of a number of things, including, uh, uh, and I don't want to be political, but uh, 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 this government's abandonment of principles enunciated in Kyoto and Kelowna and early learning and uh, child care. And I thought, you know what, I think we're getting out of balance. And I, Catherine and I spoke about it. I said, you know, I don't believe these, these things, these opportunities happen by happenstance. Mm -hmm. they, they're set before you. You have to look at them. Uh, we prayed on it, and I decided with her that it was in our children's and everyone else's children's best interest if I tried to bring some semblance of, of balance back to government and came up here with uh, the best of intentions, as others do. Um, how did you get your wife, Catherine, to, um, to really feel that this was something worthwhile? undertake because you did have these little kids at home and the responsibility for caring for them while you were away was going to fall to her and up until that point you'd been you'd lived and worked yeah. at home in, I mean not in your home but you'd lived and worked in, in Guelph you mm -hmm. were there mm -hmm. how did you convince her that this was um, 
worthwhile because in the end it's still your job yeah well I didn't have to convince her in, in, in fact uh, she had uh, moved changed her career from being in the fashion industry to uh, being a psychotherapist and so uh, Catherine understands how important it is to have uh, significance in your life and meaning in your life she always saw me as others did as a bridge builder and I think she saw it a natural extension mm -hmm. of what I had been doing in the community for so so many years with all the other uh, associations I was a part of and uh, she she said Frank you need to do this mm -hmm. and uh, so there was there was no uh, coaxing of, of any sort okay yeah how did you meet her <clears throat> well she grew up in Guelph uh, all of her life as did I and she had moved to Toronto, as they say, to be in the fashion industry and, and returned to Guelph in about 90, 1999 and uh, knew no one in Guelph anymore. And uh, we were introduced to one another from uh, two people, neither of whom knew each other. Wow. Two people that she knew, uh, one who was, uh, who was a freelance uh, law clerk and one who was a chiropractor. And they both suggested to her that they allow her to have me call her. And then they approached me, and I'm going, you know, I don't know that I want to do any of this stuff. Uh, but they said, Frank, trust me, she's a, a woman of real substance and, and depth. And so I gave her a call, and the rest is history. Wow, so it was basically a setup. A setup. <laughs> Right. And you went essentially on a blind date. I went on a blind date. Wow. Exactly. Now the important thing is, is that she had just come home from Italy okay. where she learned how to cook Italian because she's oh, not Italian. Well my lord, if she hadn't that there was, would have been no future. That was the deal maker. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. she cook well? She cooks extremely well. Does she? As yeah. well as you? Uh, much better than me. <laughs> Remember, I only know my mom's sauce okay. and yogi. <laughs> she lets you make that once in a while. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. And you have two little kids. Two lovely children, Dominic yeah. and Olivia. Wow. Yeah. Were you planning, I mean, were kids a part of your life plan? Uh, you know, I think for both of us, uh, I was 47 and she was 42. Mm -hmm. Neither of us had been married. We had, I think by that point, both resigned ourselves to the likelihood that we would not be married and have children. So finding each other was somewhat of a miracle. And then being told by a doctor that she's not likely to get pregnant because of her age and other things that were ailing her. Uh, and then to have two healthy children uh, was a miracle. Was it planned? We'd hope to have children. It wasn't critical, mm. but we'd hope to have children. And now we're blessed with two wonderful kids. And what was it like to deal with little kids um, <clears throat> when you're um, well-established in your career, um, you're a little older than the average late 20s parent, although it's, that keeps increasing, doesn't it? A little. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you've, most parents find it exhausting at the best of times, yeah. and that's when uh, you've got a ton of energy because you've still got a lot of youth on your side. You're in a stage of your life where you've got so many other commitments. What was it like to deal with little kids? It has its challenges. For those out there who are thinking of waiting as long <laughs> as I did, uh, you're right, the energy level is down. Uh, they keep you running. But there's another element here, and mm -hmm. that is there's a level of maturity that we both, both brought to the relationship. Right. And our children, I think, are, are the beneficiaries of that. Right. A little more established, uh, not so much worried about certain issues that you might have to worry about as young parents. Um, I, I, I kind of feel badly for my, my kids because, admittedly, I'm not out there all the time at a hockey rink or on the basketball court because we're older. I won't say senior, but because we're <laughs> You're older. Not no, no, not yet. But because we are older, we're not as active as, as younger parents might be. Yeah. Uh, well, but you're also busy. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're both busy. Yeah. 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 Um, does Catherine work outside the home, or is she committed to Catherine it? Catherine is, is building her psychotherapy practice right. right now, and we have a wonderful little stone uh, cottage, tiny 200-square-foot cottage beside the house, and that used to be my shed, right. and now I've been thrown out, <laughs> and it's been renovated for her office. That sounds great, though. And she, yeah, she, we're very lucky. She yeah. can work there, and the kids are around. And uh, where is your shed? 
uh, in Guelph on Woody Crest Drive, which happens to be. Oh, so you do get a, you get to have a shed. Oh, my shed. Oh, yeah, no, mine's okay. down in the bush. Okay, yeah. <laughs> mine's down in the bush behind uh, behind her shed. Okay, so yeah, you yeah. didn't like totally lose a shed. No, no, still no. Have your own. Right. Yeah. But the neat thing about this house yeah. is that it is the childhood home of the first admiral of the Canadian Navy. Oh, wow. Admiral Sir Charles Kingsmill, which we just celebrated uh, in, on July 3rd of this oh, year. Oh, isn't that exciting? Yes, yes, very exciting. Wow, and so is it designated a historic site? It's not well? designated yet, but what we did do is <laughs> I got permission from the uh, uh, Navy right. to put two plaques on two large stones. Yes. And uh, we had, I, I put up a tent and we, you know, we had a bugler and a pipers and, oh, fun. and the Navy there and we celebrated uh, it being the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Navy and the home being the childhood home of Admiral Kingsville. So there are two lovely plaques now on the lawn. Did you know that when you moved in? I learned about 10 years after I moved in oh, and I was wow. studying more of the history because I'm, I'm a history buff okay. at, at heart. That's what I studied before law. Uh, why not a why not a career in, in history then as a prof or something? Well, I, I loved history and I didn't want it to be the thing that I had to rely on for income purposes. Okay. I wanted to enjoy it <laughs> as opposed to, you know what I'm saying? There's a difference between enjoying something and it being the thing that you have to do be, yes. to, to earn an income. Yes. I understand that. Yeah, My husband yeah. will kill me for saying this, but he always makes jokes to our friends who are still in school studying things like history, and he always says, got no future, study the past. <laughs> That's what, never heard but that he makes before. a joke of me, too, because I studied art history. Okay. But, but I think, um, yes, it's tougher to earn an income. Sure. Certainly, that's why I am no longer in art history. So there you go. I think yeah. your choice of law is. That was a good one. <laughs> so, um, what do you read then? Do you read things that are historically? Um, I do. I I, I'll, I read historical based things. I read National Geographic. Right. Um, I tend to be a more tactile person, so I I like to go and look at old homes and and uh, restore. Uh, what I can of 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 older structures, that right. kind of thing. Like I've done my own house for the past uh, 25 oh, wow. or 30 years. Okay, so you just continue to, to work on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's on your bedside table right now? Right now, the Blue Covenant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you read? Uh, what do you watch for pleasure other than CPAC? <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> I was just saying to one of your crew that I. I really did watch a lot of CPAC before I before the election, just so I could learn more about Parliament because I had really no previous exposure to Parliament. Right. Uh, what do I watch on TV? We don't watch a lot of TV, okay. to be honest. Uh, to be fair, I probably watch a lot of cartoons. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Why? Well, because, because your kids Dominic, do or? because my kids do. Okay. I, I find it, it, when I'm at home in the riding, or on a Friday right. when I'm home in the riding. Uh, because I'm here the balance of the week, I'll get up early in the morning yeah. uh, and sit with Dominic and watch his cartoons with him at 6.30 because it's it's Daddy and Dominic time. That's nice. Do you know what I mean? We cuddle on the couch yeah. and we watch about a half hour of cartoons and I have to admit I doze a little. <laughs> that's okay because he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't. That's right. He doesn't know. Um, so what is your typical routine in the morning when you're home? When I'm home? Do you have the chance to um, to really you know, be part of the family in that regard before you head out to your duties? Uh, I, I do. Uh, we try to slot things in. This right. week, Catherine is going to be at a conference in Toronto, so I'm going to, the kids will be with me, and oh. I'll, I'll take them to some of the functions I go to. That's right. what my dad did with me. Okay. And, uh, and they've That's got... That's good preparation. It, it is, and they love being, you know, involved with that. Usually these functions have other children there. A lot of them are cultural functions, and mm -hmm. people from different cultures bring their children. Right, you right. Know, so, so they'll do that. Um, I set time aside to shoot hoops with Dominic, for yeah. instance, on a Saturday morning. Um, I'll sometimes take one or the other to the market, the farmer's market uh, in Guelph when I can get there. Uh, we typically have breakfast together That's all the nice. time, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, but it is crazy on weekends. I don't know anybody who doesn't go to any MP that doesn't go to a lot of events on weekends. Absolutely. It's a real balancing act. What about here in Ottawa? Did they come to visit you? They've only been, I think, twice. Mm -hmm. um, once you've seen downtown Ottawa, you've seen down, and and you know, and all of the wonderful <laughs> things. Not that there's yeah. anything wrong with no. Ottawa, but there's only so much you can do with children right. here. And, uh, you know, I remember the first time they came, they wanted to sit in the hotel room and eat pizza. Did they really? Yes. 
well, well you know come what? On, that's guys. okay. That's, that's that was okay. inexpensive. And yeah. But they've only been twice, and we've skated the canal and all. I went to school in Ottawa, so okay. you know I, I'm familiar with uh, you know a lot of the activities that go on. And after they've done it, they don't want to do it again. Okay. You know. So tell me, you went to school here, and then you come back for work as the MP, and it's not just work; it's it's your life, really. And you walk into the House of Commons. What was it like that first time when you walked in and you realized that this is your new office? I walk up. Parliament Hill by myself. I phoned my sister uh, and I had a conversation with her about how mom and dad would be feeling if they were there. And I cried. Yeah. I cried walking up the hill. And I went into 253D to my first caucus meeting uh, and without warning was told I'm going to have to get up and greet everyone. Well, I mean, you're talking about you know, the higher profile people in the party, the leader and all the others whose names needn't be mentioned. Uh, and uh, Justin Trudeau spoke before me, T comes before V. And, uh, <laughs> and then I, I got up and spoke and, and I, I, I remember pointing at the Fathers of Confederation on the wall and just said, never in my wildest dreams did I ever, ever think that I would be giving a speech to such esteemed people in such an unbelievably beautiful room with the Fathers of Confederation in my company. I was overwhelmed. Do you still feel that when you walk in now? Or is the feeling a little bit different? The feeling's a little bit different. Uh, you know, the, uh, the newness of the job wears off uh, and you get down to business. And, Does and the business wear you down? Sometimes, it depends on the business. Mm -hmm. I try not to let it wear me down. But I, I do tend to focus on one item of business at a time, so I notice much less my surroundings. Mm -hmm. But I notice those surroundings when people from Guelph come up here oh, and sure. I'm able to give them a tour, you know, and that's when I'm like a little kid running around the Parliament buildings again. Well, because you see it through their eyes too, Exactly, right? yeah. Um, what about um, sitting in the House of Commons itself? I mean, when you took your seat, mm -hmm. was, it, uh, was that a special moment for you? It was a special moment uh, at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Wow. It's a little, yeah. I, I remember asking my first question. And, uh, what was it? Were you nervous? Oh, it was crazy. Oh. I, I got up and I, I just happened to mention uh, the other party's name and a tsunami <laughs> of noise came across. And it's very unnerving at first. You know, you just kind of, your knees kind of get, you want to sit down and go, okay, I was kidding. But you don't. You just, yeah. you stick to it and you pound the question out because it's a, an important question that's deserving of a, you know, a meaningful answer. Right. So. Do you find, because Ottawa is a partisan place sometimes, that, um, and this kind of goes back to the work wearing you down, do you find sometimes that you think, I am spending so much time away from my family? Uh, is, this, is there really a purpose to this work? Of course, I think everybody would think that from time to time, but I, I try and overcome that. I, I look for ways to... to uh, fight the cynicism right. that, that's usually involved in, th in those kind of uh, feelings and experiences by reaching out to other parties and, and finding ways to work with them. Like we've created a, a compassionate care palliative committee right now, uh, a parliamentary committee of, of par members from each party, like-minded members. Right. And this wasn't at the, the initiative of the government or any party, it was our initiative. Right. So we're working together, working with um, the member from Wellington Halton Hills on motion 517 to reform question period is another way that I can try and, you know, fight that cynicism, those days that I feel, you know, am I really having an impact up here? Because yeah. as you know, things move glacially yeah. up here. Yeah. But what about the positive things? What's been the good part about being an MP? Working for my constituents. Yeah. I mean, I've had just so many in instances, like yesterday, you know, a Mexican family have been fighting to stay in Canada, fearing death when they go home. And there's a hearing that has yet to be uh, uh, determined. A, a date has not yet been determined and a decision has not yet been made. And they were being asked to leave on Thursday. And I've been fighting vigorously to keep them here. And, you know, after going to two different ministers back and forth, and you see, I, I don't say, I don't give up and I don't accept no as an answer. And so when you persist, there's success often, and, and we were successful yesterday in keeping them here. So you cannot imagine when you pick up a phone and phone home to tell somebody 
that we were successful and they can stay and their lives have changed. Yeah, I bet. It must be really quite extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Yeah. What do you do to relax? Uh, up here, I generally walk the streets of Ottawa. <laughs> I do. I'll go for a walk at night, okay. or uh, I'll often go to a movie on my on my own. Okay, it's just something to to do. Uh, and and a lot of times, I'll meet up with members from other parties. Oh, interesting. And and have a coffee oh, with them. Why? You know, we make the effort to try. Okay. And, I, well, I'm a, I like to build bridges. Good for you. And 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 those partisan moments become a little less partisan. Mm-hmm. When they when actually know like something. You know the person. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you play any sports? Do you? Your dad was a runner. I mean. Dad was a runner. Right. Just he was to be in the Olympics, but I think the, yeah, the Olympics were were boycotted by Canada in the Second World War, so he couldn't go and run. Uh, I'm a cyclist, as is Catherine. Now, unfortunately, having the children kind of. Uh, directed us elsewhere. Right. Until uh, but, you can hook that thing on the back here. Which we did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We have one of those. So, uh, but we tend to, uh, you know, we go for walks and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so calm things. Calm things. Calm things. Yeah. I'm, I need to be more active. I know that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a gym here, is there not? And there is. But there's just no time. Well, my staff is, uh, you know, they've they're signing me up and 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 they're gonna take me up there, and I think I'll get involved in <laughs> some of that workout stuff. Yeah, it's kind of crummy. If you really don't like to do it, find something else. Well, that's why I go for my walk. Yeah. 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 Um, what about um, a night routine here in Ottawa? Like, do you um, uh, go home and watch? Um, the national? Do you read a book to get yourself to sleep at night? I, uh, I'll read. Uh, I'll read a lot of stuff for the next day mm-hmm. because we're inundated with information that we have to read. I watch CPAC at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to see how we performed. It's important to do, you know, to assess your, and evaluate yourself. I'll watch the national. Uh, but as I say, before, before I you know, go to bed and, and, and watch TV, it's usually going for a walk at night. Yeah. Tell me about um, what you want to do next. I mean, if you, you've had an interesting career so far, um, you're obviously very happy to serve as a member of Parliament. If you could do one other thing in, in life, if you had another career up your sleeve at some point after this political career is done, mm-hmm. what would you choose? Well, I've already planted the seeds in preparation for that. I, I'm chairman of an organization that does international aid work, and I just started with some other friends, uh, uh, another organi- similar organization called Economic Development Solutions International, and we're raising money and providing microfinancing for women in uh, South Africa, um, uh, Mozambique, uh, and certain other countries, and in Peru. We're already we already have uh, microfinancing established in Peru. So I will be definitely doing a lot of international aid work. I've done that before. I've been seven or eight times into Central and South America building schools and houses and orphanages. And that's where my heart is when, uh, when the next career comes along. That's terrific. I really appreciate that you would take the time to be here today. I wish you the best of luck in that endeavor, too, and continued success in this one. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you for taking the time. Anytime. 